What is up everybody and welcome back to the Middle Level Media channel, your hub for everything physical media and entertainment. I am Ken here today to uh, show off my latest Kino Lorber Rocktober sale pickups uh, that I got for the month of October. And if you guys remember, if you watched the stream that I did um, back in early October, I think it was October the 6th or the 7th, sometime in the first week of October, whenever the Rocktober sale uh, started, but uh, I got on there and I picked everything out that I was going to pick up. I put it in the cart in front of you guys and I bought it. So I now have my order in and I'm ready to show it off to you guys, all the titles that I picked up. So if you were in that stream, a lot of these aren't going to be very surprising to you guys. Uh, you're probably going to know everything uh, that I'm picking up, but maybe you forgot because it was like two weeks ago. So Let's go ahead and get into it, and uh, let's see. How many did I get in total? I didn't even, I was so, so unprepared to do this. I just broke into the boxes and said, let's go. So I got 12 titles, 12 titles in total. So I pretty much, I stayed away from the Screen Factory sale. I stayed away from the Arrow sale, from the MVD sale. I focused my attention on the Kino sale. And October was such a crazy month. Uh, for new releases anyway, I, I spent so much money on just new releases that I really didn't have a whole lot left for the sales. So I decided to focus all of my energy, all of the money that I had left into the Kino Lorber sale because I don't have a lot of Kinos in my collection relative to all the other boutiques uh, that I have in my collection. I got a lot of arrows, I got a lot of screams, um, but I want to build up my Kino Lorber collection. So I figured I would focus on Kino Lorber this month. Rocktober sale was awesome. They had tons of great deals on there. I hope you guys took part in that because by the time I put this video up, that sale is going to be over. So the, let's get into the titles. Let's get into the titles. And uh, let me ask you guys, if you're not yet subscribed in the middle of the media channel, hit the subscribe button, like this video, guys. Comment down below. Did you take part in the Kino Lober Rocktober sale? What did you pick up? Leave all the titles that you picked up in the description below. So getting into the first one, I was super excited to see this one with a slipcover. Uh, I think it came out last year. I think this one came out last October, like a year ago. So it's still, it's pretty impressive that it still has a slipcover. This is a Sean S. Cunningham film, the director of the original Friday the 13th, and that is Deep Star 6. So I really don't know anything about this other than it looks like a kind of like abyss um, sphere type movie, like underwater type horror uh, sci-fi film. So I don't know. It looks pretty good. It looks interesting. So I'm excited to get into it. Um, and I'll show you all the cover right here, guys. Show you all the reverse. I might uh, go, go to the table and unbox a few of these. Um, or maybe I'll just do it now. Maybe I'll do it now and save myself the trouble. Uh, I like doing the professional unboxings is what I like to call them. But for the sake of, of this video, I think I'll just unbox it and show it off to you guys right here and now. So I don't think it's too much to get into. But I do want to show you all um, the cover if it's any different. Uh, which it's not. So there's the actual Blu-ray cover to this one. There's the reverse. And of course, with Kino Lorber, we don't have um, disc arts. But the one thing that I'm noticing, guys, is something I didn't know Kino Lorber did. And they have reversible cover art. That is very cool. I have not seen Kino Lorber have reversible cover art yet. At least I don't think so. I can't think of one. Um, bam. Reversible cover art. Awesome. Awesome work, Kino Lorber. Um, and yeah, because this was in plastic, the slipcovers, I don't like it when they do that. They put their slipcovers in plastic because it does kind of bend it up a little bit and it's all, it's all janked up on the edges right there. But I mean, it's okay. I wasn't expecting to get a slipcover anyway. Um, I'm just glad I got it. So yeah, I'm trying to think if they do a uh, reversible cover, the train might've had a reversible cover at the one that came out earlier this year. Um, and maybe I just can't remember. I think it did though. I think it had reversible cover art too. Deep Star 6, happy to get it. So the next one I got is from another very notable director. He's directed two, in my opinion, masterpieces of modern filmmaking with The Green Mile and Shawshank Redemption. And this is a Frank Darabont film. I think one of his first films, if not his first film. And this is Buried Alive. Um, so this is a made-for-TV movie, I believe. And who does this have in it? Jennifer Jason Leigh is in this film. So right away, I'm like instantly... Um, drawn into this film. I love her. I just watched Single White Me Female for the first time. Uh, she was fantastic in that movie, so I'm definitely looking forward 
uh, to watch in this one. So Buried Alive, right there, guys, I'll show you all the back of it. Um, I'll kind of zoom in. So if you know you want to read this stuff, you can. You can. Very cool cover art in this one. This is another one that I think uh, um, came out this year. I think this came out in 2021. So 2021 Kino Lorber release. And the next one that I am going to show off, I'm trying to get these in order. Um, but I got both the Clint Eastwood films. I got a fistful of dollars and for a few dollars more. I'm not sure which one comes first, but I know that they're both in the Good, the Bad, the Ugly trilogy. Um, I know it was rumored that these are coming to 4K at some point, but we haven't really got a release date for them. And I don't know if I would buy these on 4K when they first come out. Anyway, I might have to wait for a sale uh, to pick these one up. So these are directed by Sergio Leone, starring Clint Eastwood. And I am trying to build up my Western collection because I am planning to do a full on Western month in the month of January. So I'm very excited for that. I'm gonna build up my Western collection, good, the bad, the ugly. Um, I'm gonna get a couple of 4K remasters like Unforgiven and uh, some of the ones I haven't seen, Tombstone I got back there in my collection. So yeah, we're gonna do a full on Western month in, uh, in January, so definitely look forward to that. I'm gonna be reviewing a lot of Western films and yeah, these both look amazing. The cover art on these are absolutely fantastic. Um, I'm trying to see when these came out because I feel like these are kind of newer releases uh, from Kino Lorber as well. So I don't know, but I'll show you all the backs of them. I'm excited to dig into to more Westerns, some more Clint Eastwood films uh, for sure. And yeah, they look like I have a lot of special features. So I'll, I'll hold that up again for you guys to look at. Bam, bam, bam. This next one I'm really excited about too. It's a Mario Bava film. Um, and it's what a, a lot of people would call one of the first slasher films, if not the first slasher film, that is A Bay of Blood. Um, it even says it on the back. This is uh, A Bay of Blood eventually became a trendsetter, the model slasher film that Friday the 13th would emulate nearly a decade later. So I don't know who to believe because they said that Friday the 13th tried to rip off Halloween. Uh, so did they try to rip off Halloween or did they try to rip off Bay of Blood? I don't know. We'll find out when we watch this film, but this is from 1971. So incredible cover art on this one. I love the cover art on this one. Um, and yeah, I think it was uh, my friend Joe Martinez uh, that recommended this one to me a while ago. So this one's been on my radar and I was just waiting for a good sale for it. So shout out to Joe. He always sends me all these sales too as soon as they happen. So he's a, he's a great guy, great YouTube channel, him and his wife. Uh, go check them out for sure. Um, it, hopefully I'll remember and I'll leave their this, uh, link in the description below, but, um, yeah, Bay of Blood. I am excited, excited to check that one out for sure. These next two, um, and I always have a guy, movie buff. I'll, I'll shout you out. If you're watching movie buff, if you're watching comment down below. Um, he's always asking me what the best 1910s film, what the best 1920s film is in my live streams that I do. And I never have an answer cause I still haven't seen a film from 1920. Well, now I have two in my collection. I'm damn sure planning on watching one of these two before the end of this year. I have Metropolis and Nosferatu um, in the collection. So both 20s films. Um, Metropolis is uh, directed by Fritz Lang, which I saw his movie M for the first time last year. That movie blew me away from 1931. This movie is from, let's see, can I find the actual really 1927? Um, yeah, directed by Fritz Lang. It's a German film. It's what many would call the first science fiction film um, with the first ever uh, interpretation of a robot um, in film. So yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to this one. This was on the more expensive side of the Kino Lorber sale. I think this was like $17, but this is usually, if you get on Amazon, this is usually like 30 bucks. Um, so taking that into account, this is a pretty good sale for this release and I was happy to finally get it in the collection. So incredible release right there. Plenty of special features. Yeah, I'm excited to get into this one. I've heard some really good things about it. And I'm just, I really want to get into more like classic films from the 20s, 30s, 40s. I feel like I know a lot of movies from the 50s and 60s and 70s, but going back to like the 20s, 30s and 40s, I really want to dive deeper into, into some of those movies. So the next, the other one that I got, guys, like I said, Nosferatu. This is the uh, kind of vampire film from 1922. I'm pretty sure uh, the movie that inspired um, Dracula, or I mean, I know there was a novel of Dracula. I don't even know when the novel was written, but um, I just know at the beginning of Dracula, they call him Nosferatu. So 
Um, I'm pretty sure this was the first vampire movie, though. I'm pretty sure it was the first vampire movie, but somebody will probably correct me if I am wrong. I mean, 1922, how much farther back can you get? Um, yeah, a lot of people say this holds up really well. Um, I'm excited to watch this. I might actually pop this in before the end of October. I don't know. It's, uh, it's one I've been wanting to get to for a long time. And yeah, it says right here, this is an unauthorized adaptation of Bram Stoker's Dracula. So this is pretty much, um, they didn't have the rights to Dracula, the book. Uh, so they just made their own version of that character and it was not Nosferatu. So it's kind of funny that when they did the actual Dracula adaptation, they called him Nosferatu. But yeah, 1922, damn. Damn, that is way back. So looking at the images on the backs, definitely some creepy images right there. Uh, the special features, all that stuff. So yeah, I'm definitely excited to get into uh, to Nosferatu for sure. And so uh, the next, uh, yeah, I got five left to go. So this one right here, everybody's telling me to put in my cart. This is an Alfred Hitchcock film. I did it. It's called Lifeboat. Never heard of this film, but I'm always down for more Hitchcock in the collection. We'll go ahead and turn this around, show you all the synopsis, the cast and all that stuff. So yeah, uh, some cool artwork on this, but to be honest, I, I've never heard of Lifeboat, so I really don't know anything about it other than it was directed uh, by Alfred Hitchcock. So the next one up is, uh, I got two John Saxton films. So the first one that I got was Cannibal Apocalypse, um, RIP John Saxton. So the only movie I really know John Saxton from, um, is a nightmare on Elm street, but I'm pretty sure there was one other movie. Um, I think he was in Tenebrae. Am I wrong when I'm saying that? I think he was in, uh, Dario Argento's Tenebrae, uh, but I'm probably wrong. So yeah, this is a new 4k master, uh, right here, guys. So yeah, uh, Cannibal Apocalypse starring John Saxon. I remember when this one came out. I'm pretty sure it's relatively uh, new as far as releases. But yeah, this is from 1980. So great cover art on that. Look on the back for the special features, the synopsis. And yeah, Cannibal Apocalypse. Looks pretty damn cool to me. So I'm excited to get into it. The next John Saxon film uh, or Saxon film that I got is uh, Nightmare Beach. Nightmare Beach right here, guys. I feel like I've heard some really good things about this one, and I'm definitely excited to get into this one as well. This is from 1988. Uh, so this would have been four years after A Nightmare on Elm Street, whereas Cannibal Apocalypse was four years before Nightmare on Elm Street, just to give you the John Saxon uh, timeline right there. So yeah, looks like a cool flick. Looks like a cool flick, and uh, I can't wait to get into it. Nightmare Beach. Nightmare Beach. So the next one I got is, I, I do want to own all of his movies in my collection at some point. I just love the guy so much. Michael J. Fox, um, James Woods, The Hard Way. Um, so I, yeah, I've been collecting more Michael J. Fox films. I need to get The Secret of My Success for Kino. I don't know why I didn't go ahead and grab that one this time. Um, but I grabbed Bright Lights, Big City from MVD, and there's I need to get Doc Hollywood in the collection. Um, of course, I already got back to the future Teen Wolf, but I would love to, to collect all of Michael J. Fox's films and get into more of his um, more unknown films of like the 80s and 90s. There's, I feel like there's just a lot of them that I don't uh, that I've never seen before. I haven't even heard of, but The Hard Way was one of them, too. I'd never heard of this film until it started showing up on the Kino, uh, the Kino websites and, and reports and stuff like that. But yeah, Michael J. Fox, James Woods looks like kind of a buddy cop uh comedy of sorts and yeah a lot of people were recommending this one in the stream that night so i went ahead and grabbed the hard way so the last one i got guys i don't really know too much about this movie i don't know if it's any good but it was a steel book for only nine bucks i grabbed the raw head rex steel book uh for nine dollars and this was actually cheaper than the actual blu-ray release i believe um in the sale so i went ahead and grabbed uh the steel book for raw head Rex. So yeah, I don't really know anything about this one either. Uh, but it's a steel book, you know, I like some steel books every now and then, especially when they're done by lion's gate. Um, so I grabbed it, you know, why not? Why not? Raw head Rex right here, guys, we'll do a little unboxing. Let me show you all the front. Let me show you all the back. I'll show you the spine right there. Is it upside down? Bam, 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 bam. Let's open this sucker up. He's eating something. Uh, right here, it's not a poster, it's like a little booklet inside. I'll flip through, it's only got a few pages. Uh, so yeah, cool little booklet. Like I said, he's eating something. Kino Lorber classic on the back. You got some 
steelbook artwork on the inside. I mean, this looks like a generic steelbook, but they still have artwork on the inside. It's not just like gray like some of these steelbooks are. So you even got some cool disc art right there. So I'm pretty happy with this steelbook overall. Like I said, I don't know anything about the movie. You got some more artwork behind the disc as well. So definitely cool. I don't know anything about the movie, but I don't know. Could be cool. Could be cool. Let me know in the in the comments section below. Is Rawhead Rex um, an obscure monster film that's been slept on for whenever this movie came out? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, let me know in the comment section below. So that's it, guys. Like I said, 12 titles. Is that what I got? One, two, three. Yep, 12 titles. I'm pretty happy with what I got. Yeah, I could have got more. Um but it didn't. I only got 12 titles, and it's going to take me a while to get through these, probably till the next uh, Kino Lorber sale uh, next year. So yeah, there you go. 12 titles added to the Kino Lorber collection. I feel like I talk about them enough on the Physical Media Report. It was high time that I start collecting for them seriously, and I feel good now. I feel good about my Kino Lorber collection. Probably got about 20, 25 in the collection now. And it's awesome. It's very really cool. So I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, like I said, did you partake in the Rocktober Kino Lorber sale? If you did, comment down below everything you picked up. What of everything that I picked up should I watch first? What's the best of the haul that I got here today? Let me know in that comment section below. Also, be sure to like this video, guys. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And turn on those bell notifications for all future videos. And we'll see you next time.